Oh, hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about one of the most significant historical event in clinical research landscape. Today we will discuss the Elixir sulfonylamide disaster. This historical event is not only significant because it had a major impact on the rules and regulations of clinical research but it is also significant from the pharmaceutical manufacturer's point of view and it has a very deeper impact in the safety regulation that we have today. Before moving ahead, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that it brings us additional motivation to bring you such amazing videos. Without wasting any further time, let's start this video. So in this particular session, we are going to look at what exactly was the disaster. We will see what exactly was the miracle drug and how it made an impact in antimicrobial research. Then how that drug was manufactured and what was the issues with the manufacturing followed by the impact it has on FDA regulation and how FDA made a significant amendment in the form of FDCA 1938 and what are the historical learnings that we should take from this particular disaster. So first and foremost let us understand what exactly is this disaster. So Elixir sulfonylamide disaster was one of the major events that led to a significant amount of safety issues and medical casualties. So in the year 1937 Elixir sulfonylamide disaster occurred and it was one of the most consequential mass poisoning of the 20th century. This particular elixir caused more than 100 people okay, to die because of it and on October 2nd 1937 there was a specific editorial in JAMA which warned against the use of sulfonylamide and it initially reported that six patients from Tulsa in US had died due to renal failure after ingesting this particular elixir. Now after this report there was an investigation and it was found out that 105 deaths was noted because of this particular medicine and the fatality rate was 30%. Now this is a very significant number. And this particular 315, uh, 350 subjects which received this particular elixir was within the four week period in the fall of 1937. So you can imagine even the period of exposure was quite less but it caused the maximum damage. Okay, As you can see this is the news article which mentioned and that is a picture of a girl which succumbed to this particular poisoning. So whenever the subjects or the patients took this particular medication, the earliest symptoms were nausea and vomiting. But later it manifested into the renal failure which probably led to the death. And under the existing regulation, there was no provision for pre-marketing toxicity to be tested. Okay, So anyone who could prepare a particular drug just could release it into the market. Okay, So this was the disaster. Now let us understand the background behind it because this particular disaster was due to sulfonylamide. But what exactly is sulfonylamide and why was it a miracle drug? So this particular sulfonylamide was a miracle drug and the main reason for it uh, was that a particular German pathologist and bacteriologist Dr. Dogmark discovered that the industrial dye Prontosil had an effect which protected mice from streptococcal infection. So he thought that this particular drug would also be able to cure a certain type of bacterial infection or streptococcal infection. And when he tested that, he found that the reports were positive. Okay, So whenever the Prontosil was used as a drug, it found a very effective chemotherapeutic drug against systemic bacterial infection. So if we use this particular dry in the form of a drug, then we could cure bacterial infection. And imagine this is 1937. Okay, So it is a quite earlier stage in 
regulation as well as in medical research and newer molecules are still to come out to test the safety. And once uh, Dr. Dogmark was testing, he found that the prontosil was ineffective against a bacterial culture in vivo, that is in the laboratory. But when this particular bacteria was found in the system of animals and humans, then it performed differently, then it cured the streptococcal infection. And the reason for it was that this particular drug, prontosil, was metabolized into two forms. One active drug that is paraaminobenzene sulfonamide okay this particular drug which was other normally known as sulfonylamide and this occurred via the azo linkage in the azo reductase phase okay so whenever the prontosil was metabolized it used to form sulfonylamide and this particular element was playing a significant role in reduction of the infection and this particular sulfonylamide then was tested with animals and humans and was endorsed as a treatment for infection in January of 1937. So this was a major breakthrough and the manufacturers wanted to get into it so that they were the first to get into the market and bring their treatment. Okay. So now here is an opportunity where we have a miracle drug. There is a major breakthrough in treating streptococcal infection and the manufacturer wants to make this particular drug. Now here we have to note that in this particular disaster the critical role or the main culprit was the manufacturer itself because the drug which was discovered had major promises to cure bacterial infection but the way it was manufactured that was the disaster. Now let us see what exactly happened. So this is the label that we seen in the elixir that was developed by the manufacturer SE Masengill and company. Okay, so th these are the small details which play an important role in your clinical research knowledge. So you should know who was the manufacturer. So it was SE Masengill company. Okay, now this company was interested in making this particular medicine and they began manufacturing sulfonylamide. So one fine day the salesman observed that there was a demand for sulfonylamide but this particular medicine was very bitter and it was in a powdered format okay so he needed uh, so he suggested the chemist to make it in a liquid formulation because particularly for streptococcal infection the children uh, were affected more and they suggested that if we could make a syrup or a liquid out of it then it would be easily ingested and if we made it with a certain flavor then it would be very easy for the children to have this and we could increase our sales okay so this was an input from the salesperson now what happened is that initially it was an ethanol uh, formation was prepared okay so elixir is something which contains alcohol that is ethanol okay so that is called an elixir but after exper experimenting with various solvents not alcohol the company's chief chemist okay he found that diethylene glycol was superior as compared to alcohol and it might be that it was cheaper also so they found that this particular solvent is colorless and it does not have any particular odor and it is also sweet tasting so all these factors were important whenever you give a medicine to a child but the chemist was highly unaware that this diethylene glycol was very toxic and this company's chief pharmacist okay so he might be a very very distinguished chemist so he was not aware of the effects of diethylene glycol that could have on humans so this particular this particular pharmacist and chemist uh, Harold Watkins, he made a pink raspberry flavored formulation consisting of 10% sulfonylamide, 70% DEG and 16% water and he made a formulation out of it. Now if you could imagine this particular formulation was very soluble, odorless, it was sweet, it was raspberry flavored. So they thought this particular medication will be very effective when they, it is given to the children and it will have a very significant role in the sales. And this particular formulation was called as elixir of sulfonylamide. Although there was no alcohol in it, so they won't be elixir. But even 
they mislabeled this okay and this was even approved and internally distributed also okay so that it could release to the market directly but the main impact or the main missing link in this event was the toxicity of each ingredient that was concocted or formulated it was not tested although it was missed internally it was also not required by the regulations by the us fda to be tested so no toxicity report required and at the at that time the pre marketing safety of the drug was also not required okay so just you could make a formulation you could show that it is effective and you could release into the market no toxicity reports required and this was the major breaking point of this disaster so as we've seen that once the drug was released to the market there was death of hundreds of children adults okay and this particular disaster was brought out to the government's notice okay and this made a significant impact in amendment and fda regulations let us see what was that so due to this elixir sulfonamide disaster there was change in fda regulation so aside from uh, pure food and drug act which was the first act in 1906 okay and followed by the harrison act of 1914 which banned the scale uh, sale and use of narcotic drugs there was no federal regulatory con uh, control in sale and distribution of the drugs in us and this particular elixir uh, tragedy provoked a very significant public reaction the public uproar and it led to congress finally passing a food drug and cosmetic act of 1938 so the disaster happened in 1937 and immediately within a year it there was a significant amendment in food drug and cosmetic act of 1938 which was signed by president roosevelt into a law now this particular legislation has increased the regulation of the pharmaceutical industry and this was the first time that it required toxicity of the new drug to be tested before marketing so not only you have to show that your drug is effective but you also have to show that it is non toxic so the toxicity required before the marketing of the drug was a major reason for food drug and cosmetic act of 1938 this particular sweeping law also led to banning of various drug it also led to banning of false and mislabeling so in this case it was also not toxicity tested and this particular drug was also mislabeled as elixir okay and it also required the dosing formula to disclose disclose all the active ingredient that they are using unless the drug was sold by prescription as well as it required direction of usage and warnings to be printed on the drug for possible misuse so if you see that this particular disaster it was very unfortunate but it made a significant stride in regulation of the pharmaceutical industry in mislabeling okay in disclosure of all the active ingredient that is used in the drug in adding warnings to the drug which led to reduction in deaths possible misuse of the drug and the legacy of this particular tragedy was successfully passed in 1938 in this particular act that is federal food drug and cosmetic act and after this landmark legis legislation it also represent a significant stride in drug safety testing okay and it is this particular tragedy or this particular amendment that not only demanded proof of efficacy but also the standardization of animal testing and the human trials need to be executed properly to demonstrate what particular this drug is and how is it safe not only effective but it should also be safe in addition to this the fda failed to consider new drug if the fda failed to consider the new drug application within 60 days the drug was automatically approved now this is because it was also the responsibility of the fda to study the new drug within the first 60 days so it also kept the fda on its on its toes okay and it ensured that even the manufacturers are not affected they get the approval within 60 days and the fda is accountable to study that particular drug okay 
and you have to understand that despite of having all the laws in the world there will always be some margin of error there will always be some therapeutic disaster which will lead to change in laws so even today it might be that there is a disaster waiting to happen which we haven't identified yet and it is our responsibility as a clinical researchers okay to ensure that utmost safety standard are followed now there there had to be penalties for this particular disaster so uh, dr masangil uh, who was in charge of that company pleaded guilty to 112 counts of adulteration and misbranding and paid a fine of 26100 dollars and due to the incorrect formulation of that drug uh, harold watkins maybe he felt guilty maybe he felt accused and it led to his suicide dr general dogmark was awarded the 1939 nobel prize for medicine for discovering prontosil as sulfonylamide and helping and making significant stride in treating streptococcal infection okay so there are invention made by scientists across the world but how do you use those particular in inventions okay that is the significant part the discovery the invention is critical but how is it implemented for the public safety and public use and treatment of medicine is also one of the important characteristic so the 1938 regulation even prevented various similar misadventures that occurred in united state and the relation between the pharmaceutical industry and the government and its impact on practice of the medicine was significantly changed after the disaster so after each and every disaster which is unfortunate in its core we have to understand what was the historical learning how those particular disaster are impacting today and how are we learning from them so let's understand so when it comes to historical learning we also got to learn from this particular disaster that although there was a significant drug discovery but it is very important that we carry out pre preclinical research before taking that drug to the market we also need to have toxicity testing so that we ensure the drug is not only safe but it is also non toxic whenever it is ingested and pharmaceutical manufacturer was also made accountable for making incorrect formulation and causing public safety a risk and more importantly how this particular drug is used in the market who it is targeted to is it is targeted to small children pediatric drug what should be the formulation what should be the dosage that also was very significantly seen in this particular disaster and how a disaster can have an effect on amendments on the us fda regulation itself and how the us fda should review within 60 days to approve a particular drug including the toxicity so i would request you all clinical researchers that not only before marketing but before each and every step make sure that you report the adverse event make sure you, you report any particular symptom sign that you observe before the drug is to the market and even if that drug has approved to the market make sure that if you have any adverse reaction if you have any significant event then you report it to the regulatory authority you report it to the fda so that we can prevent a lot of casualties a lot of safety events and a lot of deaths so in historical learning we should understand that how far we have come where do we have to go and always remember a disaster is just waiting to happen if you are careless if you are not looking for the safety events so make sure you report all the safety events to avoid such kind of disasters I hope uh, you like this video please make sure that you subscribe to this channel and like and share this video and I've made a playlist for historical events in clinical research which includes the Nuremberg trials the Tuskegee study so I will give link in the description box you can go ahead and check it out